Guys, today B2 and I are going to give you a master class on the art of the volley. And you want to stick around to the end of this video because I promise you, I'm going to be showing you things that you're getting wrong, that you're confused on. And I'm also in the next video going to be sharing a series of drills that you can use to perfect your volley. So make sure that you pay attention to this video and the next video I post on YouTube. And the reason why I'm making this video is it's inspired by my totally obsessed tennis players out there. I have people come visit me every week pretty much now from people all around the world. They love tennis. And interestingly enough, what they need to improve the most I'm finding is not learning how to serve like Pete Sampras or hit a forehand like Roger Federer, but it's actually learning how to volley better at the net so they can set themselves up for success and they can stop blowing those easy volleys. So let's get into this lesson right now. So throughout this video, I'm gonna be sharing some really great clips of still images and volleys of some of the best volleyers of all time so you can see that the pros are actually using the exact technique that I will be preaching about in this video. But first I wanna get into common mistakes that I see people making at the net that's really killing their chances of being a good volleyer. Okay, the first and the most obvious one, and I understand why you're doing it, is the wrong grip. Coming up to the net, not even realizing that you're in this frying pan grip because lots of times you'll start out in the continental grip and you'll switch over and you'll start doing this. Now for high volleys close to the net, the good news is you can get away with this all day long pretty much. But once you start moving back here where I am behind the service box, now this is where you really have to earn your paycheck as a volleyer because you can't fudge this area of the court. You have to have good technique in order to set yourself up to get into the winning position. So if you have this frying pan grip, especially low volleys down here, it's going to be a nightmare for you to control. You're either going to basically hit them into the net or you're going to pop them up too high and they're going to go out. So that's why the continental grip is a non-negotiable. You have to be comfortable with the continental grip, which for a while will take some time. So let me show you first of all the actual grip and then the ready position so you know if you're in the right position or not. So what you want to do is I like to call this right here, this part, the webbing in my hand. And I want to just basically go to the top of the racket, put, stick the webbing in there, run it down. Now you're in that continental grip. I also love the way the English people call it the chopper grip because it is like you're chopping the edge of this racket right into the camera here. Okay, so that's extremely important. And you want to make sure that in your ready position, usually you see good players, they're either off to the backhand side or maybe they're a little to the forehand side. I don't care either way, especially like, let's say you're going to work on the forehand volley, just practice it. I'd like to see you set yourself up for success. This is a big deal right here, is have this edge more open as you're in this ready position. Okay, do you see how I'm doing that? Having the edge open, because I find that lots of people, even if they think they have the right grip, and sometimes they do, but they, they tend to be like in the ready position like this. See that? And that lets me know right away you might have the wrong grip and then you start volleying like this, and you're gonna start leading. This is one of the biggest volley killers, is you start leading with the top edge to the volley. When you're hitting top spin, you do wanna lead with the top edge, but when you're hitting volleys or chip shots, you actually want the bottom edge leading towards the tennis ball. So if you're gonna practice your forehand volley, you're just going out there, it might be a good idea to be in your right position like this. If you're playing a match, you'll see a lot of really good players more cheat to the backhand side. But again, look where the edge is. The edge is facing right here to the ball. That's leading the play. And so when they're going to hit a backhand volley, it's going to look like that. 
All right, so that's extremely important. Not being in a ready position like this at the net. This is a no-no. This lets me know you're probably in the wrong grip and you're probably gonna be volleying a lot of balls in the net because you're gonna be leading with this top edge. Okay, the next volley killer is the first move. We're gonna just work on the forehand right now. I'll also show you the back in a little later in this video. But the first move is key. And I ask people all the time, what's the first necessary body part that has to move to be a good volleyer? And since you've heard a lot of general terms that are good habits, like move your feet, I'll hear people say, feet, you gotta move your feet first. Or turn your shoulders. And I want you to think about yourself like a baseball player, okay? Because I really have played a lot of sports and basically catching a baseball in a glove and volleying, it's a very similar move. So if someone hits the ball at me if I'm playing baseball and they line drive it at my face, which can also happen to you in tennis, especially if you're playing close to net, should you turn your shoulders to catch the ball? Should you move your feet to catch the ball? No, what do you want to do? You basically want to be really loose in your hand and be able to like get your wrist up right there and then boom, you catch the ball. Or if it's coming here aside, catch the ball. So the first thing you need to move and get really good at is opening your hand up. And really I find that people struggle, even when they hear this tip, because again, I saw it all last weekend, they struggle to open up the hand enough. So even though they know to open up their hand, they do something that I call hiding the wrist hiding the wrist. You see how you can't really see my wrist really well right now? So like they'll get ready like this and that ball is coming from across the net. So if I'm going to volley right now, where would the ball go? It'd go way over there. So you have to learn how to really be flexible in your hand and open it up. I suggest you go buy a baseball glove and you learn how to catch a tennis ball in a mitt. It is going to feel the same exact way because I've hit probably millions of volleys in my life. And I've also played a lot of ball sports. And I can tell you they feel exactly the same. So learning how to go like this, right there. Now you're going to be able to hit a good volley. You see that? And I'm going to show you some images of players right now getting set in this exact position. This is how you would catch a ball as well. It's the same thing. And a couple of things. That ready position is super important. One thing you can do is basically take your, your hand and make like your arm, I'm sorry, make a little crossbar here and put it right under your chest around your ribs and then relax and have your elbow touching your, your other arm, okay? Your inside arm, have, your, have this elbow touching that and this will put you in a good ready position because you don't want to be too far out here because then you're not going to get any pop on your volleys, okay? And you obviously don't want to be in here either. So right here is a great ready position. Also knows how I'm low. So right there is great. And then your first move, I got this tip. Bridget, I'm giving you a shout out. She just came to my camp last weekend and she was very confused. She goes, oh, you mean you invert your shoulder to make that move? And that's a great idea. So that makes a lot of sense. So you move your hand and you invert your shoulder right there. And then you'll be in that ready position to hit a perfect forehand volley. Okay, the next essential move is when you're going to volley is knowing what type of volley you're hitting. I learned this from Brett Hobden, who actually is right now doing stats for the great Novak Djokovic and some other awesome players out there. And so he talks about that when you're going to hit a volley, there's, there's, there's three types of volleys you're going to hit. You're going to work on winning the collision, which basically means if you're further back in the court, you have to win the collision because you've got to put some stick on the ball. Or if the ball is moving slower, that would be a winning the collision volley, which I'm going to teach you how to do right now. Then it would be meeting the collision. So basically this meeting the ball, that would be when you're closer to the net or someone hits the ball very fast at you. It really doesn't make sense to move the racket too much to the ball because the ball is coming so fast, all you really need to do is deflect it into the desired targeted area. And then the last one would be losing the collision. Like when Carlos Alcaraz hits that amazing drop shot, he's losing the collision or deadening the racket in some way, okay? But a lot of people really struggle how to put stick on their volley. So that'd be a winning the collision volley. So what you want to do, again, you're in your A position. See that right there? And when you make your first move, you go to catch the ball. And now look, I have what's called play in the elbow. What does that mean? That means I have room. When I say play, I mean I have room to move the racket head forward, okay? 
And so what I want to do is I want to be moving the racket forward. I want to make contact, and I still want room on the runway to extend out. Lots of people struggle, like I had a young lady this weekend in my camp, and she was struggling to get pop on the volley because she was always volleying the ball at the end of her runway. She was here, and she probably started to learn that habit because many coaches will say, all you need to do on the volley is just stick your racket out. Just block the ball. And that's not true if you need to hit a volley in the midcourt or you need to add some pop to it. You just can't stick your racket out because there's not going to be enough momentum on the ball. So if I'm going to be hitting a volley right here in this area of the court and transition to net, a lot of times I want to hit a volley that is deep. Sometimes it's good to lay a volley short too. You've heard of the Newt volley maybe from Martina and Will Hamilton at Fuzzy Yellow Balls. But it is also good to be able to stick a deep volley that lands deep in the court and stays low. And that ensures that you're going to get a high volley. Okay. So in here, you need some power in here. And so what you want to do is the last thing to really get great at your volley, and I'm going to show you a little drill, is to learn how to be a great storyteller. And this is maybe the one, the biggest challenge that recreational players have is they're not good storytellers with their volleys, okay? So if I have a target to go cross court there deep in the corner, I want to tell the story with the strings. I basically want the strings basically locked in at the end at my desired target. And if they can connect well, then I learn to volley kind of like a surgeon. When you're volleying, you need to be very specific. That's the number one skill of a volleyer is they can hit it right to their desired area so they can set themselves up and then put the ball away. It's not necessarily how hard each volley is going. But with this, we want some power and some placement. So to do that, again, all the tips apply that I've given you before, and then I've got to tell a good story to put it deep into the, into the corner there. And you can see that my strings and my target are aligned. Now, when you're volleying this area of the court, another mistake that people make is that they do exactly what I just did. You see how I was still when I did that? You actually want to glide through this area, but still hold your strings on the target. And I'm going to show you some videos of players, how they really hold their strings. <laughs> One hand from I'm right here, I'm going to volley, but I'm going to be moving through, but still holding my strings on the target. Let's do that one more time. I'm going to be here, but I'm going to freeze my strings on the target, be moving through, and now I get my split step, and I'm ready to volley. That is so, so important to be a good volley, because I find that when I'm asking my students to volley, there's lots of breaking of the wrist. Obviously, this is not telling a good story. Even if I made the volley, I'm not going to be consistent because I'm not telling a good story here. And then there'll be other people who are really trying super hard. Let's say I'm trying to buy the ball right at the camera, right? So someone's trying to buy right at the camera right now, and then they'll freeze their strings. I'll ask them to freeze their strings, but their strings are over here. Am I telling a good story if I'm trying to buy to the camera? No, it's going over there. So what I want to do right now is I want to share a drill with you, and I'll show you the forehand and the backhand volley. I'll just give you a little lesson on the backhand volley today. A lot of the principles that you've already learned apply the backhand volley as well. And this is a great drill that you can do 100% on your own to really improve your volley technique. And then in the next video, I'm going to add a series of drills you can do so that you can really perfect this technique. Because I'm telling you, this should be the number one thing. Now that I see you coming week in and week out, this is the number one thing that most of you need to work on is improving your volley skills. So this net right here is a great teacher of the volley, okay? You wanna get perfect technique, all you need is this net strap. I am 100% serious. It does so many great things. First of all, it puts you in an athletic position because I want you to be low enough. Now I'm over six feet tall, right? So I want you to be low enough 
that when you make your first move, you're able to easily rest the racket face on the top of the net here. And your wrist, notice how the wrist, right, has set the racket head above the wrist, okay? And the racket butt is leading the charge, right? What happens if you start leading the charge with your racket head and the racket butt flips back this way, you're gonna be breaking the wrist, which a lot of tennis players do because they think they need this extra stuff to make that volley be a little more powerful. And again, the power is actually gonna be coming from the hips and the shoulders, and then you need steady hands. I give the volley a hip pop when I want to put power on it, okay? So again, today you're learning how to stick a volley, winning the collision. I'm down here, I get set, I, I'm basically right into my rib cage. I have room to push forward, and then I'm gonna freeze the strings on the target, okay? So this is something you can just do. You can just do a double hop split step right here, volley. Double hop split step right here, volley, using the net strap as your guide. Because when you start to come off the net strap and you're practicing, again, you're gonna start telling a bad story. Now, if you wanna learn the backhand volley, I like to use the top hand right here and just practice some off-handed volleys. Okay, practice some off-handed volleys where you're right here, low, and then you can push and freeze. Right here, low, push and freeze. Once you get comfortable with that, right when you're about to go forward with your momentum, with your, your non-dominant hand, then what you're gonna do is separate and you're gonna counterbalance. So it looks something like this, where you're here, down here, and volley. Here, down here, and volley. And then you can get a little cardio workout and go back and forth from your forehand volley to your backhand volley. Put a timer on for 20 seconds. Try this for 10 sets. Tell me if your volley technique does not improve and you're also, you're gonna be kind of tired. So again, you're gonna be here, volley. Here, volley. Here, volley. Double hop, volley. Okay, so there you go guys. That's a little bit of a master class on how to perfect your volley technique. In the next video, I'm gonna show you a bunch of drills, but if you wanna also come here and train with me here in Atlanta, Georgia, or maybe you wanna to go to Cincinnati and go to the Western Southern Open, or maybe you wanna go over to Rafa's Academy like I have here on my hat, or you wanna to go to Paris or South America or the South of France. If you wanna train with me, then what I want you to do is go to the description box down below Click on that link. Also, you know what helps a really good volley? Is a good serve. Like I said, it doesn't need to be the top priority, but most people also struggle with their serve. I have a free seven day serve challenge that you go down in the description box or you can go up in the card section. You can click that. If you are still watching this video, you see this guy right here, let's go visit him. Let's go visit him right now. If you're still watching this video, and you wanna make this dog hung, uh, happy, this is my buddy B2. If you wanna make my buddy B2 happy, you will like this video, so like up this video, and subscribe, because he's in a lot of the videos. And you know, a lot of stuff I'm teaching, it's so easy a dog could do it. Let's go, we'll see you guys in the next video.